this is the first time they're back. And and doesn't mean count them out, but it means that if it's not a fluke, they're here to stay and they, they stand a chance of winning this title. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cup Connection. I'm Mike Massaro, and we are lucky enough today to have one of the 75 greatest NASCAR drivers of all time with us. That's Greg Biffle. Greg, hey, thanks for being with us. Hey, you know, I've got to know, what, what are you up to right now? I see that we've got the in-car camera going. So uh, what are you doing? Well, it's it's kind of a unique day. So uh, I was I was supposed to be driving home from Florida. I went down and got my center console boat. And... Uh, I lost the wheel bearing late last night, and and so I had to pull over and work on that, and then end up driving all the way home. And uh, you know, so I just just woke up a little bit ago, and the family uh, had a trip planned somewhere, and they said, "Come on, we're leaving." And I didn't even know where I was when I woke up. You're texting me. I'm like, "What what planet am I on?" So anyway, here I am. All right. Well, we appreciate you doing the uh, sleep deprived interview, if you will. We we definitely always like having you here. Hey, uh, uh, I know you're on your boat a lot, but how about racing? What, what are you doing these days? I saw you at Stafford Motor Speedway back in June racing SRX. What, are you doing any other racing? Uh, we I'm doing the uh, Sand Outlaw series, so that's the the side by sides out in the sand. We have two races coming up in October, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I've been tempted. We were going to run a champ car race at VIR and, uh, that got canceled, you know, about two weeks before the event. So actually the, uh, I raced early in the season in Oklahoma with the sand outlaw and then Stafford. So those are only, really the only two I've done this year so far. And talk about versatility, you know, Stafford, for those folks who don't know is, is a half mile asphalt oval and you were in the SRX car, which is essentially a stock car, but the uh, the the sand outlaws. You know, I, I did a little homework on it, but I'm not all that familiar. I know it's a passion of yours. It, it, what's that like? It's really fun. Uh, it, it's uh, so it's we raced, we sand drag race. So the way it started out was all these big weekends out in the sand dunes. You know, guys would gather, sort of like, you know, sort of like a sandbar, and and guys would race up up these up Oldsmobile they call it so it's a big uh hill and so it's you know it's, it's Idaho California Oregon and Washington have some great sand dunes um Oklahoma so it's all over the U.S. and uh Utah has a, a sand mountain Utah but anyway so we formed an organization sand outlaw series and started racing you know bought a tree and the whole light system and made some rules and made it more organized and I ran that for about three years and today, this year is the first year I haven't run it. And, uh, I'm really enjoying that because it's a, it's a lot of work, uh, putting all those events together, but I still love it, race it. And I'm still part of the organization, but it's basically, we race side by sides or Polaris, you know, razors with, uh, crazy big turbos built engines on alcohol. So we're going 105 miles an hour in a 300 foot. Uh, sand drag strip or up the big hills 600 feet we race all the way up the hill so it's a lot of fun I, i've seen some video of these things it seems like you get quite a bit of air they, you know they can be kind of you know a little bit dramatic if you will oh yeah there's all it's uh it's a lot of fun there's all kinds of uh stuff i i enjoy it, it it's going in the sand dunes for me is is right next to being on the race track it's the it's the closest I get from, you know, thrill, exhilarating, but it's being in a dirt car on a Saturday night or, or being at the racetrack. Well, it, it sounds like fun. A lot of fun to watch. That's for sure. Hey, you know, you know, speaking of, you know, racing, I, I kind of heard when you were at Stafford, uh, I think you were on the PA system, maybe doing an interview with my mentor, Jack Aroot. Did I hear you correctly that you're, you're talking about maybe trying to uh, get involved in some more cup races, maybe in the future? Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been talking to John Cohen that that owns the forty four team, and you know it's funny about every four weeks or three weeks I get a phone call from him, and uh, hey, we're gonna maybe get our stuff together. We're gonna run Darlington, and then 
hey, we're going to run Michigan. And then, hey, I think we're going to run Talladega. You know so, how so, it then, is. So let me sponsor. ask you. I mean, is this, is this just maybe you're doing it? Or did, is there some definite plan? Your guess is as good as mine because <laughs> the, all those dates have come and gone. You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy helping a small team. And, you know, it gets me out there on the racetrack to see all my friends. And I understand, you know, competing at that level. Uh, you know, it's much more challenging to try and, you know, win a race or finish, you know, our goal, obviously finish in the top 15 or something. Um, and you know, you see Michael McDowell's success, you know, that's a smaller team and, you know, I would like to try and help this team, uh, achieve, but you know, it's, it's part of, uh, getting the car ready and funding and all those things have to come together. You know, we see guys like Ryan Newman coming back, you know, dabbling a little bit here and there, um, it seems like you guys could just never get away from it. I mean, how much do you miss it? I miss it a tremendous amount. You know, it, it's the whole lifestyle, right? You, you miss seeing all the friends, all the media, all the doing all the things and, and being out on the racetrack. Something we, you know, we both love and did our entire life. So it's hard to get up and walk away from it and say, you know, I don't care about it. I'm not going to do it again. So when those opportunities come up, uh, even though, you know, you know, you're not going to get in a car and probably win. It's a, it's an opportunity to go back and and help someone else and get back on the track. So uh, we alluded to it at the beginning of the interview, Greg. Uh, NASCAR this year uh, is recognizing the 75 greatest NASCAR drivers of all time. You're on that list. Well, what did that mean to you, being added to that list? Man, I'll tell you what. that that Mike, that was a humbling experience for me. You know, Mr. Elton called me. And then told me that I made the list. Of course, I was hoping I did. At the same time, I was surprised that that I did. Um, it, there's some great names on that on that 75, and uh, I, I'm really honored to be, you know, one of the 75. And I, it makes me look. Anytime you get recognized for any of these things, it makes you look back over your career and all, all the accomplishments. And and sometimes you yourself take it for granted. You know, like, oh, yeah, I won a bunch of races. It was fun. I raced for, you know, a few different people. But you look back at the accomplishments, and and it's, you know, quite quite amazing. And I and I, one thing I do look at also is when you're in the moment, you don't recognize that this is something great. You know, you, you're when you win a race or you, you know, when you win something, you're happy, you're excited. Uh, you, you know, it's a great thing. But, you know, you just don't recognize that you're, you're, you know, making history, actually each win, you know, and, and how special they are. Yeah, there's a lot of folks who've been in that series who never won. Um, you know, you put quite a few victories on the board, including some championships, one in the Truck Series, one in the Xfinity Series, also won Rookie of the Year in both of those series. Um, I think you won Rookie of the Year in the Cup Series too, right? So, uh, Jimmy Murray beat me up by a, by a hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you still got a lot to hang your hat on. That's for sure. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, I look through your victories and I look through your accomplishments and, and I have a hard time pinpointing what might be your career highlight, your your greatest accomplishment. What would you say it is? It is a difficult uh, thing. I think about that a lot. And there's a lot of special moments. You know, my first win at Daytona in, in the Cup Series. Um, but I think, you know, probably one of our, our my greatest accomplishments is the 2005 season. Where, you know, unfortunately, with three rates to go in the chase, we left a wheel loose at Texas Motor Speedway running third and had to come back down pit road and, and we finished 20th that day. And that, you know, that was three races to go in the championship and we lost uh, the championship by just uh, five finishing positions. So that was a defining moment, but we finished second points and won the most races of anybody in the in the cup series that year we won six races um and so that was sort of a that was sort of a moment uh that that was i i you know you think of one that got away and that's a moment in in time that you know you think about when you go back how i would add a championship in all three series and that was really the year you know i won the championship in 2000 then 2002 and that would have been 2005. It would have been a great string, and you know things happen, and uh, you know that just wasn't wasn't our day, wasn't our year. But that was probably 
putting the whole career together, that was probably one of our 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 finest years um, all together. And that was the year you won six races. Is that that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot, lots to be proud of there for sure. Uh, lots to reflect on uh, in terms of your career. You know, Greg, one of the best parts of doing this show is that we take some questions from our audience, and we have a question. Uh, that I picked out of the bag that, that I like because it kind of segues me to some other questions I want to ask you afterwards. But first, I want to ask you this question. It comes from Dan G. Uh, he sent it to us through Facebook. Uh, and this kind of goes back to, I, I want to say, 2016-ish. Um, he wants to know if you saw that initial decline at Roush Fenway Racing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because you, you look back through and, you know, a team's never on top for very long, it seems like, right? So think back to this. And, and, and sometimes when I reflect way back, I put Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick a lap down every single race. It wasn't like occasionally. It was every race. And, and to think about that moment in time, when our team was so good, we had all five cars in the chase multiple, you know, times. And, um, you know, it, it was, that was really our highlight. And from there, it was a slow, but steady decline, unfortunately. And there were moments of, of highlights when you get, you know, take two tires and you get out front and you have track position and you got to race the heck out of these guys and you end up winning one um you know so there were uh times but you know you, you saw uh you know you saw carl or matt leave then you saw carl leave and you know for those reasons um so, you know roush fenway was kind of in you know we were in that we were in that decline and i hung in there and hung in there and i wished you know, going back, I wish I would have maybe tried somewhere else. I raced at Roush Fenn my, my entire career. Lit up. But felt like they gave me my opportunity. I had a great relationship with Jack. And more importantly, I had a great relationship with 3M and the sponsor. And and leaving Roush Fenway not only meant leaving, you know, that, but leaving the sponsor as well. So, uh, you know, I, I wish I would have done something else, but but I, I hung out. And uh, now... You look, and and I'm so happy for Chris Busher and the way the organization is going right now. So um, it really is a reflection of how long it's taken, and maybe Brad's influence is making a difference in the organization. And 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 that's why I wanted to ask that question first, because my next question was about the resurgence. I mean, right now, it seems like Roush Fenway Kozlowski uh, has turned the corner. Um, I, I think if you go back to February, I don't know if everybody was expecting that they'd have two cars in the playoffs, but here we are. Uh, uh, they're contenders. What do you think about the way Brad has influenced the, the, the turnaround of that team? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. We knew, I knew when I stepped away from full-time at 16, I knew we were more than a couple years away from writing the organization. That's one thing, you know, I had a contract, you know, still through a multi-year contract that I left because I couldn't run 25th every week. It was killing me as a driver, as a, as a, as a competitor. Um, and, and I knew the I saw the writing on the wall for the last couple of years. And I always said, I'm not going to stay in the sport and, you know, just no show up to the racetrack and know I have no chance of winning. You know, that's not what I'm here for. That's not what I built my career on. I love, you, you know, and, and I trapped with my heart and the, just the opportunities weren't there to, to write that. And so, um, it, it, I think it has taken Brad a couple of years to get, uh, you know, his influence, maybe the Penske influence, um, you know, Brad smart. He paid attention over there and, um, you know they've got the organization going i'm so happy for them and i'm not going to say they're they're lucky but chris has been in the right position the right time he's worked really hard and once you win a couple of these you feel like superman you feel like well how come i can't win this week 
And, you know, uh, it, and I remember what that was like. And, and they're in that situation. So uh, that that's good for them. I'm happy for Jack and, and all the folks that are still there. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully they make a run at this title. Hopefully. I, I guess my question is, uh, is it realistic? Can one of them walk away with the championship? I think they can. It's just keep in mind, and, and you'll you'll ask me another question, you know, but keep in <laughs> mind, this was their first time competing at this level for the title, technically. You know, Chris has won, you know, three races, and, you know, they're, they're still discovering their way, so to speak, on, I'm going to call it the big stage. This is the first time they're back. And, and doesn't mean count them out, but it means that if it's not a fluke, they're here to stay and they, they stand a chance of winning this title. You proud to see that as a former Roush guy? I am. I am. I couldn't be happy enough for, for those guys. And, and they worked really hard and, and a lot of great people there. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy for them. Well, I, I am too. I think it's a great story. Uh, and folks uh, watching, we just want to remind you, uh, we did an interview with Chris Busher uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, Please check that out. We appreciate you joining us here today on Cup Connection. And Greg, hey, I know you're on the middle of a trip, probably uh, getting back a little sleep deprived, as you say. Appreciate you taking the time today. Absolutely. Great to great to catch up with you, Mike, and uh, I look forward to it. Drive safely, my friend. Thank you.